Hello, my name is Edmond Jamna, and on behalf of DW Consult, I want to welcome you to Tutorials on the Go. Our zeal here is to help transition people with zero, struggling, or shaky base in accounting to an expert position and to a place of confidence. It is also a platform to assist in the smooth studying of the ACC and ICA professional qualifications, as well as for any tertiary accounting discipline. All that is required of you is to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell as well to be part of the program. Tutorials on the Go. Bringing accounting to heart. Now, today's episode's lecture intra group transactions. Now, in as much as the concept of group account is to portray a united front for a parent entity and its subsidiary or subsidiaries, the entities are legally distinct in their operations as well as the preparation of their financial statements. So, it is thus possible for trade to transpire between them. Now, if the transaction is made on credit, this will lead to the recording of both a receivable and payable. For example, if a parent P sells to a subsidiary S on credit, the parent P will present in its individual books a receivable expected from S, whilst S will present a payable to P. Let's talk about receivable and payable balances for intra group transactions. Now, in the group concept, the transaction will be considered as an entity selling or buying to and from itself. So, upon consolidation, the receivable and payable balance must be eliminated. From the consolidated statement of financial position. Just as our understanding. AK, represented by A Limited, owns 95% of the shares of Sheila Limited, represented by S. Now, extract from the statement of financial position of each company as at 31st December 2020 are as follows. So, receivables for both companies are listed. So, S, the payables. Included in A's receivable is 15,000 owing from S. S's payables include the 15,000 owing to A. So we have to calculate the total receivables and payables to be shown on the consolidated statement of financial position as at 31st December 2020. So when we come to the solution, receivables will give a final figure of $30,000 to be consolidated. This is made up of the $30,000 from the receivables. Then we less the amount that AK will be expecting Sheila to pay. Then we add the $15,000 which is in the individual books of Sheila. Because AK is expecting 15000 from Sheila, it is recorded in AK's receivables, which is part of the 30000 So we eliminate it. So when we come to the payables, the total figure to be consolidated will be $25,000, which is made up of the 15000 of AK plus the 25000 of Sheila. Then we less the 15000 which Sheila has recorded as a payable to AK. Let's test our understanding again. Ian, a limited liability company, owns 85,000 of the shares in Maggie. Ian has receivables of 530,000 and Maggie has receivables of $200,000. Now, Ian has payables of $100,000. So, Maggie has payables of $50,000 of which 30,000 is owed to Ian. So, we have to work out the consolidated receivables and payables in the group of Ian. For solution, receivables to be consolidated will be $700,000 made up of $530,000 for Ian, $200,000 of receivables for Maggie. Then we less the $30,000 which Ian is expecting Maggie to pay to him. When we come to the payables, it will provide a figure of $120,000, which is $100,000 for Ian, $50,000 for Maggie. Then we less the $30,000 which Maggie is expected to pay to Ian. Let's look at certain differences that arise with respect to receivables and payables balances. So, in the earlier discussions, the balances tally between the entities. So there can be an instance where the amount the seller records as receivable from the buyer differs from what the buyer presents in its books as owing to the seller. This might be due to 1. Inventory in transit. Secondly, cash in transit. In the inventory in transit, the goods are dispatched by the seller, hence records it as part of its receivables. But the buyer is here to receive it by the time of the preparation of the financial statement. That presents no record of it in its inventory and nothing charged as payable. To remedy this situation, first, we adjust the receivables or the buyer's books to assume that they have received the goods. We do so by debiting the inventory for the buyer by increasing the inventory. Then we credit the payables with the difference. Once that has been done and we have the same balances for payables and receivables, we proceed to remove the intra group trade receivables and payables. Let's test our understanding. So, Brian Limited holds 55% of the shares of Felicia Co. for $2.5 million on 1st January 2017. The current assets of both companies as of 31st December 2017 are shown below. 
So you have receivables, inventory, current liabilities. Of Brian's receivables, $2 million is owed by Felicia. Felicia, on the other hand, recalls a payable due Brian of $1.5 million. Now, this is due to a consignment from Brian, but not received by Felicia by the year end. So we have to show how this discrepancy should be cleared. For solution, the total receivables will be $6.9 million, which will be made up of the $3.5 million in Brian's, then the $1.4 million in Felicia's books, then we less the two million, which is the intra-group transaction. When we come to inventory, three million two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which is one point five million dollars from Brian's book. Then when we come to the Felicia's side, that is where the adjustment will be made. We pick the seven fifty shown in her book for inventory. Then we add the five hundred thousand, which is the amount of the consignment that Brian has dispatched but yet to be received. Then when we come to payables, it will be a figure of two million three hundred and fifty thousand dollars which is the 3.5 million coming from Brian's books, then the 850 from Felicia's book. Then we now have to list the intergroup balances. The 1.5 already shown in her book as owed to Brian. Then we add the 500,000 now that we assume she has received the goods. The other causal effect of discrepancies will be cash in transit. So this is where the buyer sends out an amount to clear up part or whole of its debt with the seller. So once that is done, the buyer makes the necessary adjustment in his books but the seller does not receive it on time hence does not make the necessary adjustment so causes a difference it also go through two steps the first is to adjust the payables or the seller's books to assume that the cash has been received we do so by debiting the cash to increase it then we credit the receivables to reduce the balance with the amount that is transferred and not received once that is done we proceed to step two by eliminating the intra-group trade receivables and payables, if any. So let's test our understanding. So P has a trade receivable of $1,500 at a year end due from S. This does not agree with the corresponding $1,000 trade payable in S due to a check of $500 sent by S immediately prior to the year end. So P did not receive the check until after the start of the new accounting year. P and S had receivable balances of $2,000 and $1,000 respectively and payables of $5,000 and $3,000 respectively. So we have to show how the current account should be treated. So as a matter of solution, we debit cash of $500, then we credit receivables with the $500, which is the difference, to reduce the receivable balance from S. So when we come to the receivables on consolidation, the balance will be $2,000, which will be $2,000 from P, $1,000 from S, then we less the intra-group balance. It was $1,005 for P. But now that the adjustment has been made, assuming the cash has been received, it has been reduced to 1000 which will be equaling that of what S has in its book as payables. So when we come to payables, the figure will now be $7,000 for consolidation, which will be 5000 from P, 3000 from S. Then we less the intra-group payable, which is $1,000. All too soon, we come to the end of this episode's lecture. I hope it went well. If you have any comments or feedback for us, do well to drop them in the comment section below. Whilst at that, kindly subscribe and turn on all notifications to stay abreast with our postings. Also, follow us on our various social media handles as captured on the screen. Join us on another episode of Tutorials on the Go. Until then, take care of yourself and stay blessed. Poker, poker.